Today we live in the age of instant information and instant gratification, and many people feel they cannot live without the internet. However, for the longest time, humanity did just fine without it in their lives, and we could do so again. However, at this point, maybe the internet is doing more harm than it is good for humanity, and maybe it'd just be better if it all went away. Now, that might sound radical to some people, but there are some pretty legitimate arguments for it, which is what we're going to look at in today's video. Number 10. The internet can connect people, but it can also isolate you to the world close to you. Many people like to talk about how it is such a great positive that the internet connects people from all over the world on sites like Facebook. However, when you really stop to think about it, while it seems like it's keeping us all connected, it can also keep us isolated without even us realizing it. The problem is that when we see the little status updates and get that dopamine hit, especially when we're already busy with real life, it fulfills that part of our minds that believes we need to stay in touch with people and spend time with them. That psychological fulfillment makes us think we're already connected, but unless we actually are at least having conversations and talking to them through Messenger, we are more alone than ever, despite being able to see pictures of their children and leave a like or two. We may be more connected, but we're also more isolated at the same time. Number 9. The internet has almost all knowledge, but it lacks a filter to help you evaluate it. The internet is often praised because it is a repository of pretty much the sum total of human knowledge, minus certain things that are classified as secret. However, while this may sound like one of the greatest things ever, it is a double-edged sword and comes at a great cost. We were always able to get the vast majority of humanity's non-secret knowledge through libraries or other sources, but it took us longer to do so and it required us to go through more trusted sources. Now through the internet, we can find thousands or even millions of results about the same thing, and there is no guarantee that they're going to agree on any given bit of information. In fact, more often than not, they really don't. When researching anything online, you have to be careful about who is and who is not a legitimate source. This can be tricky because the internet has made us all think we're experts on everything when we really aren't. Evaluating information when you don't know a subject well already is extra hard, and if someone wants to build a foundation first to understand the information they found on the internet, they usually try to build that foundation of knowledge on the internet. Number 8. Facebook has become so omnipresent that it is sweet generous in terms of power. Sui generis means in a class of its own, and that is basically what has happened with the social media site Facebook. It has become so dominant and so powerful that its influence can practically be compared to that of many governments, and there is little in the way of real regulation to control how or why they do business the way that they do. Some countries have occasionally turned Facebook off for a bit in times of crisis, but the backlash is usually so fierce that it quickly returns. This brings us to the question about what to do with something like Facebook in the long term. As a single company, without taking any of our money, they have managed an insane amount of influence over our daily lives, and no social network or social habits seem currently capable of breaking people of that influence or that addiction, as the case may be with some. The truth is that something like Facebook is deeply unprecedented in human history, and it could have unknown ramifications decades from now. It is already hard to quantify just how much it is changing the way we interact, and removing the internet entirely, it might be the only way that we can stop it. Number 7. No bad idea cannot be found with detailed instructions and advocates for its use. The internet is a place where you can find information about pretty much anything, and sometimes you don't even have to look that hard. Unfortunately, this isn't limited to just the good stuff. If you want instructions for how to 3D print a gun or make bombs or other dangerous items, you just need to hop online, and that's really only just the start. If it's illegal and you can think of it, you better believe that it's online. And the internet just isn't policed that well, as people are uploading things constantly and creating new web pages all the time, and there's very little little oversight. The FBI and other international organizations are constantly looking for things like child pornography, and some of the worst, most illegal things are being shown, sold, or given instructions on how to do on the internet, but it's like trying to remove all the water out of the ocean with a bucket. And to make matters worse, a lot of legal gray areas make the information hard to take down as long as the person says that they aren't actually using it and that it's just for educational purposes. Number 6. The internet has normalized all kinds of bizarre fetishes into the mainstream. 
Now, don't get us wrong, we aren't saying we're prudish against pornography or that there's anything wrong with something like consenting people doing what they do in their own bedrooms. However, the proliferation of pornography on the internet, as satirized by South Park, has often made it harder and harder for a lot of people to get off simply by watching, reading, or thinking about normal vanilla sex. Regular sex is practically boring now to some people, and almost every piece of sexual media now has some kind of strange fetish or some special element to it to make it more interesting. In a way, this is not surprising, as the internet has led to a renaissance in terms of high-quality entertainment, but it has also led to a situation where many young people start getting into sex and expect things not to necessarily be like they are in reality. And also, while it may be easy enough to find people into stranger fetishes online, it might be a lot harder to find a partner who is into it in real life. There's a lot of people talking online about how hard they find it to find a partner who accepts their fetish, or they are finding it difficult to deal with their own partner's strangeness. This doesn't mean it's wrong to have a harmless but weird fetish, but it has made a lot of young people have unrealistic expectations about sex and maybe given them an inaccurate view of how easy it is to find a compatible partner that shares a rare fetish. Number 5. Child Pornography Has Proliferated Like Never Before in the age of the internet, child porn has become a huge problem, and it isn't showing signs of stopping anytime soon. The problem with the internet is people can upload things from any corner of the globe, which makes it really hard to punish them. You may have to refer things to their country's law enforcement and wait while children are suffering. And of course, that's only if you can track them down to begin with, as evil child pornographers are constantly using new tools in an attempt to stay anonymous with the authorities. And for webmasters, you can't just ban people in most cases from posting pictures at all. You would simply have no one left using your website. So instead, with a combination of automated programs and often traumatized humans, we as a species play a grim game of child porn whack-a-mole. But as long as the internet exists, especially as the mostly unregulated international entity that it is, it is unlikely we will ever be able to eradicate it from the World Wide Web entirely. Number 4. Bullying has been taken to an entirely new level in the modern age. Back in the day, if you wanted to bully someone, you at least had to have the courage to face them in person or maybe call their house, which required a little more nerve than a quick message on Facebook. Now people feel emboldened to simply be mean and to constantly attack others all day on social media, even when they know full well if they pulled that in person, they would probably get a very real punch in the face. Now, whole gangs of kids can easily harass a single person without even leaving the comfort of their homes, and this has driven people to suicide. Further, it's quite hard to punish people for this. Unless they are actually demonstrably encouraging someone to commit suicide, that kind of intent can be hard to prove, and punishments are much less harsh for minors anyway from a legal standpoint. The truth is that as long as the internet exists, at least as an unregulated entity, it is going to be a hotbed for bullying, whether it's just an individual or an entire group ganging up on other kids, and it's going to be very hard to stop. It gives bullies a feeling of power, and it causes the victims to feel like they never have a place they can go to escape the pain. Some would say they should just go offline, but with the youth of today, that pretty much involves social isolation, so it isn't really an effective long-term escape from the bullies. Number 3. No matter how bad what you believe is, you will find friends online. Before the dawn of the internet, if you had really awful ideas such as racism, it would be really hard to find that many people who agreed with you that vociferously, especially depending on where you lived. However, with the help of the internet, you can find people who will agree with any bad idea that you have. You could believe that young boys should be able to consent to sex like Nambler, the very real organization satirized on South Park, or that maybe you believe sex with animals is okay. Whatever bad idea you can imagine, there are people on the internet who will share it with you. And this has gotten so bad that not only will you find people who won't think it's so bad, but people who will actually defend it and you to the ends of the earth. This allows bad ideas that were on the fringe and dying out to see a sudden resurgence in popularity and in fact an entirely new generation with some of the old bad ideas and behaviors that we once thought we'd eliminated. With the help of mass communication, it is all too easy to ensure that no bad idea ever truly dies and sometimes it can even return stronger than before. Number 2. It is no longer a bastion of free communication, and its usefulness is ending quickly. Net neutrality has officially ended in the USA, and despite efforts to curtail the inevitable, the telecoms are winning the battle and their money is winning the day. However, after all that spending, all they really may end up doing is killing the internet once and for all, and as such, foolishly killing their own business off like the greedy idiots that they are. 
The truth is that free enterprise and fairness and the ability of anyone to do anything on the internet was what made it useful, despite the double-edged sword aspects, and with that gone, it will slowly become more like a slightly interactive form of cable television. When the big telecoms started to control more and more corners of the internet and independent and burgeoning websites began to die off, people they found it less and less useful, and they perhaps spent more time interacting with each other in person rather than on the internet. The fact of the matter is that when something that was all about free communication becomes, well, not that, it's hard to expect it to exist for much longer, at least in its current form. Number 1. It has almost become too big to fail, and the consequences could be dire. Now, the argument by some when we talk about moving on from the internet is that it's almost too integral a part of our daily life and too big to fail. However, the argument against this is the same one many made against bailing out certain banks after financial collapses. The idea is that if something is too big to fail, then we need to let it fail anyway and fix the mess regardless of the pain, because something that is so big we can't live without it but that is too big to fail is overall a detriment to society that will eventually collapse on its own. If we control the collapse, we can at least mitigate the damage. However, if we wait until it's too late, until the internet really starts to fall apart on its own, the damage to our social and other physical infrastructure is going to be much harder to contain, as it will not really be a controlled dive off of our dependency on the internet. However, the good news is that we have lived without it before and we can live without it again, and if we could end our dependence on the internet, we could still be a technologically advanced civilization and have quick communication, but go back to perhaps a better and more thoughtful society that spends more time on real interactions. So I really hope you enjoyed that speculative video. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. And don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out my other channel called Biographics. I'm going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.